You're right in the fucking bucket, I'm afraid. Oh, for fuck's sake. In case. Bangies. Ah. Time. Onwards and outwards. Continental types read pedants. We'll argue the day long that this is a soldering iron. However, we here in North Day America know this as a sodding iron. It melts solder. Any time now. So we'll get into the meat of her. What you figure is in there. Ha! Ah, good guess. Wee bastard thing. Screwed me over for a couple minutes there. Hiding under its uh, petticoats. We'll get this. Uh, feels pretty good. Doesn't feel like nylon, but it's not ABS, that's for sure. And we see that the graying here. So there, there's got to be glass fiber in there. You, you hear that? That's the... Uh, Shoulders on the back of your neck standing up. There you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. PET. Uh, polyethylene thalamate. That's what uh, mylar is made out of, and, and Tyvek, and also your fancy dancy North Face uh, jackets and all that sort of stuff. Plastic bottles, what make you grow boobs. Holy oh fuck. There is a lot of chooch in that chotch. It's, uh, I would have thought it was just this uh, PCT element just controlling that. That's what happens in these Heikos. These Heikos are uh, wholly underpowered. They do work in a, in a pickle, but just run off four AA batteries. Oh, there is some high tech shit on here. One thing we noticed lots of Celastic all over everything. It's almost like they're. You're paying attention to what people think about stuff, amazingly. Celastic all over the place here. I see, now this will be interesting later on. This looks for all the world like a potentiometer. And that means that it's monitoring the temperature of yonder tip. That means that we can go, maybe, we'll see if we can do this. Check this out. Heat output. 90 watts, 18 seconds, 750 dungarees, Frankenstein. I, I I like my tip a little bit hotter than that. So hopefully we can uh, do a little tweak routine and get it a little hotter. Normally on the dummons, what happens is these are uh, positive temperature coefficient uh, uh, resistors. So the, the higher the temperature, the more the resistance is. So as the resistance increases, the current decreases and that is what limits the temperature but in this case we actually have a confuser in there what monitors the temperature managed to get the guts out of her without nicking the gross parts and the, the handle is very very stout it's a PA66 so nylon with that TPS uh, SEBS over molding so that's the styrene butylene so that's good very um, not uh, very resistant to sullivans for that type of um, rubbery thermoset or thermoplastic now having a look at the board lots of stuff going on all kinds of surface mount devices here all of the traces we see have had solder applied to them to increase the current carrying capabilities or possibly the cool no not the cooling see lots of vias here for cooling through hole vias and all we have is the one we got a big diode there brain box there one big MOSFET there am I even in framing you fuck yes I am for once even a blind pig some hand soldered stuff here fully thick conformally coated stiff board nothing wrong with that a tight packing on it but very well assembled. Yeah, that's gonna last quite a while. I mean, this is the type of tool you grab, you go, you kind of toss it around, it gets just tossed in a tool bag. 
90 watts is a lot of power for one of these. Now, some guys swear by the butane. I find the butane uh, soldering irons a pain in the ass because there's flame there and, you know, there's hot shit flying out the end. And Okay, let's see about this. 10 amps. Dropping quick. Well, that's good. 9 amps at uh, 12 volts. Yeah, that's almost 100 watts. So they ain't lying. And the amperage should drop off. Yeah, the amperage is dropping off, not because the battery is de but because that positive temperature coefficient resisting the heating element is going up in temperature. And now we turn off. And you can see when it's turning off, it's flashing off and on. So that's really weird where it's just sort of pulsing to 300. I guess it doesn't want to overshoot. So it's being real conservative on its PID. Is it just me or is it sort of all over the place? Was it 400 there? Maybe it's the thermal compact, uh, contact rather. Oh, that solder's oxidized now. That might be it. Oh, also it needs time for, because the heating element is inside the metallic enclosure. So it needs time for the metallic enclosure to come up to temperature without overheating the heating element itself. So that's probably what it's doing when it's pulsing. Well, let's see if we can't give her a little extra. Now, out of your finger here, boys. Cockwise or anti-cockwise? I'm kind of partial to anti-cockwise myself, but we'll go cockwise. And bottom her right out, back a quarter turn. Generally pretty safe. That way you always know where you started from. Or wait. No, you don't. I just fucked up. Oh, well. Corn deck. Well, my battery died, so... I don't know what we caught there, but I was dicking around with the with the potentiometer and it looks like I made it cooler by going clockwise, so we'll go anti-clockwise. Make her hopefully hotter. We'll see. Okay, we got her cranked up to 406. Nice and hot. That's good. That's great. Made a couple special modifications ourselves. Rather ignominious problem over here. All the batteries for the camera are dead and I mislaid the charge air. So, about to get this thing together. Sorry about the shakiness. I'll be as cromulent as possible. I'm going to put a, a fairly new battery on her. Now, one problem I noticed with this prior to getting her back together is that the switch, the micro switch, is only rated for 16 amps, which is fine, but that's 16 amps at AC. And of course, AC voltage, the current goes through zero amps 120 times a second. So it's easier to switch AC than it is DC. Now we're talking 10 amps through that micro switch. It's not going to last very long. It's underrated for that, actually. So let's have a look, see if it's actually making and breaking the full 10 amps. If it is, we know that that's going to be one of the first thing that fails. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. Oh, shit. Put it in the wrong fucking way. Fuck. I had a goodly look at her, and I don't see any shit stains, so even a bull moose gets lucky once a year. We'll uh, try this again. Ginger carefully. Uh, uh. Okay. So far, so goo. And right fucking dead. Son of a diddly. Sometimes you're the fucky, sometimes you're the fuck or. We problem troubleshooting 101, do the simplest thing first. I can't find any shit stains and I can't find any blowouts on the IC, so I got some lateral. Had some lateral light on the subject and just get in there with the pecker detector. If and you missed out the first batch, I'll be doing another batch when uh, Momo Bear's ready there. Baby doll's ready, but. You know, we got a family to raise, so it's kind of not a huge priority. They do come in handy, though, especially for doing mic macro shots real quick with your phone. I do need that lateral light, though. Not seeing any blowouts on there. 
We have a suspect. Appears to be a bleed down resistor for that big electrolytic capacitor. Blew the top off it. That might have been what let the smoke out. We'll get the meter up and ohm it out. Just to give the non-pixie wrangling types in the crowd an uh, idea of the scale of these surface mount devices. Now, as I said, this is probably a 1206, which is a huge, big surface mount device. Look at the size of her. There's the capacitor. Right down in there was what we were looking at. No focus. Actually, the camera, the, the camera on the phone focuses better than the fucking Canon piece of shit. Unbelievable. Got the meter out on the ohm scale. Unfortunately, it's just like the first time I had sex single-handed in the dark. This um, is showing 50 ohms. Now, that doesn't mean it's good. It could be measuring something else in the circuit. So what we could do is put the battery in. But what I'm going to do is just see if we have some continuity. That is, low resistance from the positive, And then try and sort of move it all around the board and see where, where the connection breaks. Bear with me now. Trouble with shooting this thing, probing this thing out. We're going to have to make a believe on account of me running the three-legged race backwards with a gunny sack on my head. Speaking of my wife's wedding night, is <laughs> do you find those jokes grating? It might be because I'm so cheesy. So the deal is here, I went from the positive over to here, through the switch, and everything ohmed out perfect. Then we got over to here. Oh, and I also did the negative. So over to here. Check this trace over here. Continuity, 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 all the way up to here. Now, where it goes from here, I have no idea. But I set to work in on the positive side. It is going through this MOSFET. Now, there will be a body diode in this MOSFET. So you'll get no continuity in one direction and continuity in another direction, in the other direction. And the other thing is, this is conformally coded, so you have to pierce that non-conductive conformal coating. you got to get right in there and pierce it with a nice sharp pokey bit. And the problem is, this MOSFET, even though it's not cleanly blown right out, the body diode blew out of her. That's what let the smoke out. So there is no continuity in either polarity. If we swap the leads, there's no continuity. So that tells me that this thing here is right dickered. Now we can confirm that. How are we going to do that? I'm going to jumper it out. I'll jumper this over to here. That should power up our, po our, our hot end. Herc, in the far distance. That's the alarm call of the Northern Canadian bumblefuck. Uh, how do you know what is the gate and what is the drain and all that? Are you sure you're not going to fry something? Are you sure this is fried? Because how do you know what is the drain and the source and the gate? Well, have a look at this. We got positive going in, so that's going to be your drain, and then the source is going to be here, and then the gate is going to be here, and it's also bleeding off. We got a bleed down resistor off that gate to make sure it's not floating. Wait, over to the positive. Wait a second. This might be, uh, instead of NPN, it might be a PNP. In any case, what we can also do. Let's just take the number off it and see what it says on the internet. Well, here's the data sheet from non-name brand Huyi Semiconductor. A P-channel MOSFET. There is the body diode, what is uh, part and parcel of the manufacturing process. Can't get rid of her unless you blow it out. But I'm glad I printed it out to confirm because it gave me pause. And I thought about it. It's impossible that this burned out uh, on the reverse polarity the first time because the switch connects it up and I didn't have the switch depressed. So it's impossible that that blew out. So I must have been, uh, I must have fucked up on the uh, conformal coating. So what we did, uh, what I did here is put it in diode check mode and sure enough, if we go like so and like so we get four and a half volts forward voltage so we know it's not blown right out of her because normally those go open circuit There's something interesting going on here i put the battery back in and the red light comes on so that means the brain box is chooching we'll give her some poor and that goes out blinks 
but we're not getting any heat out of the hot end there. So let's, uh, I'll start probing, I'll start probing voltages, see where everything goes. Okay, we got 12 volts over here. Yeah. And we got nothing over here until we actuate. Now here's the problem. Is that's a P-channel and we get a little blip. Watch this. A little blip and then nothing. And then the P-channel MOSFET, it needs to be driven low. So it's actually getting 12 volts because you see here this, this bleed down resistor is the only thing feeding it from the positive 12 volts. So this actually needs to be sunk to lower voltage than than ground or it needs to be a lower voltage it needs to be a negative voltage in order to drive this there's special circumstances you yeah anyway normally this would see if i'm not mistaken this would need a negative voltage and we're not seeing that so it is not chooching and we can see that because there is 12 volt voltage drop across here meaning this is open all the time even when we actuate this guy so in order to bypass this what we can do well i can bypass all of this stuff just by jump ring from here to here and then the switch is doing all the thinking oh she's already fucked you can't fuck her anymore like the old bodge wire in there and uh engage your safety squints in case something doesn't like it Eat. okay oh any who's this? Let's go over here then. Set this ticking time bomb down. Like so. Okay. Okay. Contact. No smoke. That's a good sign. How is that thing getting hotter? On. Oh, fuck yeah, buddy. It works. Now, <laughs> at full chooch, how hot will she get? Let's get her back together and see. Now, she's going back together pretty goo. Famous last words. One thing, why all that circuitry? Well, because you need control over the battery so you don't kill the battery. Of course, the lithium ion batteries are very susceptible to overcharging and undercharge. So if and you're not careful, you'll fry the batteries and that's the expensive part of this. So I've left the control circuitry in place to at least hopefully show us what the battery charge, what the battery state is. Uh, uh, might be a little too hot. Fuck, there's no end in sight, boys. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, did it blow the thermal fuse? Yeah, I think it, it's going to blow the thermal fuse here. Son of a diddly. So, she's right fucking hoopa juped. I fucked her right good and proper. That is some hot ass shit there. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Well, so what do we do? We own our mistakes. Yeah, bite the bullet. 100 bucks down the tubes. Son of a diddly. Well, there you have it. The uh, Will Fucky soding iron. If you get fucking around with it and you cross the polarities, yeah, she's dickered right off the hop. Other than that, lots of power seems like. Not a bad idea. If only I hadn't fucked it. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.